Hi everyone, we're going to be doing an activity about periscopes. We're super excited to have you here. Um, I'm just going to intro a little bit about what the Moonbox is. Um, so I'm Erica and I work at Skokie Public Library as an experiential learning specialist in the Boombox as well as in the lab. So if you've seen me, hi, and if you haven't, Hello, very nice to meet you. Um, so what the Boombox is, is kind of an experiential place for you to interact with STEM topics and just get it like under your hands so you can really test it out and have fun. Um, so what we've been doing while the library has been closed is we've been still be doing Boombox stuff. So we've been hosting these live events, which you can view. And then we've also been covering different STEM activities through our activity sheets. So we've been, the past topics that we've done, which you can view are ingredients. So different aspects of things that go into other things. Um, the great outdoors, which is super fun once the weather becomes less snowy, you know, and then hide and seek. So, Menor, if you want to intro yourself as well, go ahead. All right. Hi, guys. I might have popped up there for a quick second earlier, but my name is Menor. I'm also an experiential learning specialist at the library, and we've been working on a new set of Boombox blog posts called The Elements. And as Erica mentioned, that's kind of what we've been doing while the library has been closed. Erica, do you want to share what your blog posts were about? Yes, mine was about fire, which was super exciting because there were so many like new elements that I learned about it, um, like controlled burns and how that's really great for the environment, even though like, I think when we see fire, we see it as like a super destructive force, you know, and then my activity sheet was about making a homemade fire extinguisher like not to be used on large fires, but like for a little tea candle, you can like extinguish it using the power of CO2, um, which was super cool. What about you, Menor? That's awesome. I totally am gonna try out your activity sheet later. Mine is actually about pinwheels. It's kind of similar to periscopes, at least sounding wise, but other concept wise, it's completely different. It's a really cute thing. You might've seen them in like gardens in the springtime. So definitely try that out. And then in terms of my blog post, I did air. So I mostly talked about air pollution and just kind of how air works as well as wind, which is kind of like a larger scale version of pinwheels. That's awesome. Um, I'm so excited to read yours as well. I hope that everyone checks them out because we really have fun like curating them and like researching them. And there are a bunch of other topics because we did the four elements. So earth, fire, wind, and earth. Did I say that one, Menor? Did I get them all? Earth, all? fire, wind, and air. Air, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you're ready, Menor, why don't we get into periscopes and like kind of give some back history as to what periscopes are because I don't know about you, but I didn't really know that much about periscopes before like researching for this activity. Um, so I'm gonna start us off with getting some info about what periscopes actually are. So periscopes are an instrument that are used to observe an object when you don't have a clear line of sight. So like with telescopes, when you're looking at a telescope, it's usually at something that is straight on. You don't have to worry about anything getting in your way. That's why it's usually used for like the night sky, right? So um, periscope's main purpose is to be able to see around corners or other angles that you can't see with like just your naked eye. Um, periscopes were not only used by submarines, which I feel like is like the most common way that we see periscopes used, but also in trench warfare during World War I and World War II. Because when you think about it, when you're in a trench, you're super deep down in the earth and you don't know who is above you. So that's where periscopes really got popular. And I'm sorry, if you hear my cat in the background, he's very talkative today. Um, so the Greek translation of how periscope as a word is kind of broken up is peri, P-E-R-I, which means around, and scopus, which is C-O-P-U-S, means to look. 
Um, I think one of the most popular uses for periscopes is in submarines, right? We see that all the time in media and like maybe you've seen a submarine in person. That would be so cool. Um, and I think one of the reasons why periscopes need them is for when they're totally under the water and they need to see if anything is above them, usually like another ship or something along those lines. So Menor, do you want to bring us through the history of periscopes? All right. Thanks for letting me know about that. I actually didn't know what Periscope meant, like word by word. It's really mm -hmm. interesting to know about the roots it has. Um, so I'm going to quickly talk about a little bit of the history. And in advance, if I mess up any of the names, if I butcher the names, then that's totally on me. But the rich history is actually super interesting. So Johann Gutenberg actually offered Periscopes to pilgrims back in the 1430s when they needed to see over other people in like large religious gatherings. Mm -hmm. I guess our form of that today would be like holding up your phone super high in like a concert or something like that pre-COVID times and you just wanted to be able to like look down here but then actually see all the way up here mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until Johannes Hevelius actually created the uh, rendition of the periscope in around 1647 where people actually you know started seeing a use out of it because at first it was kind of just like a a fun little thing. Oh hello your cat is here. <laughs> I told you you be making an appearance. <laughs> And then it was later in 1857 where Hippolyte Marie Davy actually invented the first naval periscope, which is what you see in submarines. Nowadays, um, submarines don't really use periscopes, but I'll get a little bit more into that, and they are still useful, so don't get that twisted. Um, eventually, the mirrors were actually replaced with prisms, and what Marie Davy did was he put two small mirrors um, on the tube at a 45-degree angle, which we're going to incorporate into our craft later today. Also, one more thing, uh, like I mentioned, modern periscopes or modern submarines don't use periscopes anymore. Instead, they use electronic sensors and sonar. But today, some people still use periscopes for collecting other permanent data, and they also use it in video cameras as well. Erica, do you want to explain more about how the science of periscopes might work? I would love to. So um, the science of periscopes is fairly simple at the basic form. So like none of the fancy schmancy ones, um, just kind of like the one we're gonna be trying to make today. Um, a periscope is a basically an, entubed, um, an encased tube, right? So like kind of like what we're gonna be using today um, with mirrors that reflect the light back into your eyes. Um, in more complicated forms of periscopes, there are prisms and mirrors both working together instead of just mirrors. Um, and during World War I, a lot of soldiers would use dual periscopes to be able to see with both of your eyes instead of just the one eye opening, kind of like um, binoculars almost, but like in an angled way. It's like um, when I was researching, it was like super weird to see because they're like dual that kind of makes them look like a little bug or something. Um, so it gave them better advantage to be able to see um, over the deep trenches that they were in rather than just using the one lens. Um, and even in some of the fancier ones used in the submarines before they kind of like stopped using them, they would even use fiber optic cables to be able to magnify different things on the horizon. So if you were in your submarine and you couldn't see something 20 kilometers out, you would be able to like zoom in using super fancy technology like fiber optic cables, fiber optic cables, and um, you wouldn't have to so to speak, get any closer to what you're trying to observe. So um, one of the main things that we also want to cover today, which Menor is going to be talking about, is um, how your eyes work and kind of the science behind um, when the light does reflect back into your eyes, kind of how that, that works out. So Menor is going to explain that to us today. All right, and this is where it's going to get a little bit more sciencey, so I might use some technical terms. And at any point, if you guys need an explanation, I'll be sure to stop. So periscopes kind of work similar to your eyes, and that's why they work so well. It's because those prisms kind of replicated some of the features that we already have in our eyes. And so when light enters your eye, it hits the lens um, right in your eye back here. I have glasses, so it's kind of hard to see, but I'll explain why I need glasses later too. So the lens is 
which is to focus light rays on the back of the eyeball, like all the way back here. And it's a part called the retina. The retina actually has these little um, rods and cones that kind of are able to help you see and they kind of distinguish all the light that you're seeing into actual things. You know, when you first see light and it goes into a prism, have you ever seen it separated into like those seven different colors? Well, rods and cones are kind of able to separate those into three major color groups, which are the reds, greens, and the blues. Using all those reds, greens, and blues together, that's how they kind of create an image, and that's how you're able to see millions of different colors. But specifically, rods help with your peripheral vision, kind of like what you see on your side. A little experiment that you can do at home now is like see how far you can put your hands and where kind of like you stop seeing them. That's how far your peripheral vision really is. And cones help process color, like I mentioned. Uh, there's three different types of cones. Each have varying wavelengths. Uh, so that's kind of how that works. Uh, moving on, I wanted to kind of explain why I wear the glasses real quick, right? So glasses that I'm wearing right now are kind of one of the main tools that we use today to focus that light into one narrow stream. And that's when it hits the retina and that's how you can get a clear image. So you'll notice in the periscope today, the prisms that we're using, well, in our case, a CD, we'll get into that later. Um, it's gonna be a way for you to see kind of above what you normally would. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really interesting. So should we just get right into it? I think so. So. I think we're going to start off with just going over the um, basic materials that we're going to need. So a lot of this can be, so to speak, like upcycled. You might be able to find an old CD like around your house that you might be able to snag and use. Um, so we are just going to be using today a nice CD, blank CD. We're also going to be using a um, paper towel roll. Do, do, do. And Menor and I, oh, we also need paper. I don't really think it matters what kind of paper you use, but just something that you can, is gonna be large enough so that you can cut and put over this. Um, tape, I only have Packers tape today. So um, you can use Scotch tape or whatever other tape you have around. And then for extra stuff, Menorah and I are going to be decorating ours towards the end. So we have these super fun pieces of paper, very colorful, that we're going to be just going on and kind of making some fun stuff out of. And then, of course, you will be needing some scissors or um, what are those little like sculptor things that we, exacto knives, words. There we go. Um, if you are agile enough to use those just make sure that if you are younger you have adult supervision because those can get like super sharp um so starting us off um now that we've like run through all the materials and stuff you need um menor is going to go ahead and start off with the first step that we're going to be doing all right, and just a quick disclaimer, you can totally paint your periscope, the little tube if you want to. We, like Erica said, we have all these different like color pieces of paper, so that's how we're gonna be decorating ours. Um, also make sure that if you do wanna paint it, you do it right now. So grab your materials if you need to, because before we cut and before we do everything else, you wanna make sure that paint is completely dry. All right, so we're gonna start off by actually uh, cutting right away. So if you need an adult to help with scissors or if you can do it on your own, make sure you have that ready. And now what you wanna do is cut a slit at 45 degrees in a half moon design. And Erica, do you mind showing us the way that you would do it? Personally for me, I would probably fold it in half and kind of just go like this. That way it can be perfect, but how would you do it, Erica? I think so. So like I am probably just gonna trace mine my cat is jumping everywhere. Um, let me get back to you on my screen. So like, I would probably be just trace mine because if I make any mistakes or anything, then I'm gonna be able to like go back and just like redraw it rather than having to find a whole new paper towel roll. So I am actually going to be putting mine cause my roll, it's kind of large. So I am, hopefully you can see me. I'm going to draw mine kind of right there, super shaky. 
Um, but it's kind of that half moon circle and I might have to make it a little bit larger just because I need to be able to fit this in it like this. So you want to make sure it's like pretty much as close as you can get it to be able to fit there. So I'm going to go ahead, Menorah, do you want to cut it first or should I cut it first? Are we going to do it, cut both? it first? I'm going to try out my half circle design, see if it works, but if it fails, then everyone, you guys should try out Erica's method instead. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to go ahead and cut this. It might be a little, you might have to kind of like fidget with it just a little bit. Mine actually didn't turn out half bad. Would you recommend that the half moon, the like the moon part be facing upwards towards the hole or would you recommend it face downwards? Cause mine does, mine goes upwards. Mine goes upwards as well. I might have to cut mine just a little bit more because my CD isn't fitting, but um, kind of like that, just because then the CD will be able to like really fit pretty snugly in there. All right, sounds good. I think mine might be a little bit too close to the hole. So how would you recommend to cut it out? Would you say like maybe like two finger lengths like that, maybe two inches down here? Yeah, I would say so. So like I have mine kind of like good to go um, so that you're gonna be able to like see that light reflected into it. So that's kind of like, kind of how you'd want it. Right. Yeah, you I got think it. I did mine more towards the top. So let me create another slit right towards the bottom instead. <laughs> Troubleshooting. We love it. Because then while Menorah is doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of make mine just a little bit more on par for the cores. Do, do, do. Kind of got to like wiggle it just a little bit and get kind of finicky. For sure. There we go. And I'm actually going to cut a little bit just off the top because I think that will make it easier to see. So once you've like cut your slit, you kind of want to cut a little bit of the top off like that. So you're actually going to be able to see what is being reflected rather than having like a large piece of cardboard just like sitting in the middle. See how it just fits like a little bit better and light will be able to come in. Okay, how are you doing on yours? Mine looks pretty good. You know what? I think I might actually start decorating mine first because I wanted all the paper to kind of go around. And if I put the CD first, it might be hard to cut little small pieces out of it, but I'm gonna make sure I do all the cuts first. So what's the next cut that we have to have ready, Erica? Okay, so we've already completed our little half moon sign, right? So we wanna be able to see um, what we wanna see with our periscope, right? So we need to create like a little window on the exact opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and trace mine on. This might be a little bit harder to cut just because it's going to be like way smaller than the half moon, but that's kind of what mine is looking like. Do, 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 which is like why sometimes using an X-Acto knife or something like that might be a little bit easier just because you can like really get in there. Um, but I am still going to try. Let's see I think if this I can... might actually, this is where the folding in half might come in handy because for a square, you just need to cut two slits and then Ooh. cut the bottom right from here and here. And then you got yourself a square. That is a very good point. I am going to MacGyver it and try and cut it with my pen. See if I can right. kind of get something started there. As you guys can see. Those little slits right there I kind of just made when folding in half and now I just got to cut out the square. Very nice. How big did you say our square should be? Um, that's a very good point. I think that I made mine, what would you, let me finish cutting it out and then we'll be able to see it. Give me one gotcha. second. Oops. Um, I would say so, mine's like an inch by an inch, kind of like a square like that way. Yeah, that's what I would say as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and like put mine in 
just to see how it's like working out. Yours already looks a lot better than mine. Do, do, do. So I can actually see the um mine is kind of the hole already at the top just by like looking in. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Okay, so I'm actually gonna take mine out just for the next step, um, which you are gonna be covering. Um, so go ahead. So for the next step, what you wanna do is cut out a circle that's big enough to fit at the top of your paper. I have a bunch of these square sheets. So for me, it's pretty simple. I just have to round out the corners and I'll be good to go. But if you have a larger piece of paper, what I recommend is kind of pushing it down like this and tracing around, as you can see, it'll make a perfect circle cut. And that's where you can tape it or glue it, whatever works for you. And you just wanna make sure to cover only one of the sides. And make sure that in the middle of the paper, circle, you cut out a rectangle. Erica, how big do you think that rectangle should be? About the same size as our peephole or different? Um, I would recommend it to kind of be the same. You want it to be a nice like slit rather than um, a rectangle. Um, like you want it to be kind of more long, um, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to go ahead and try and demo it. So I'm just gonna take your advice, which is super smart, because I was actually just gonna plop my piece of paper right on top and try and like cut around it. So like, you are awesome for giving that tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace all the way around. Oh, and be careful, because I just nearly wrecked my creation by pressing down on it. That would not have been great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut mine out. I'm going to use my tried and true folding method again here to get that little rectangle in the middle. It works. Just recommend it. Okay. That's about good. Oh, yeah, Do you think the square nice. should be a little bit bigger? Just maybe a little bit more long is what I would recommend. Let me get mine going. The more of a rectangle rather than a square, got it. Yes. Do, do, do. I'm taking your advice and, you know, I don't wanna wreck my paper, okay. Do, do, do. <laughs> Oop, and I think I made mine a little bit too small, so I might have to quickly recut mine. Yeah, I recommend using the square sheets if you have them. All I did was just round up the corners and it ended up being almost a perfect size. Oh, okay. I will take that advice and I will do that. Plus it kind of adds like a fun flair with the like colorful, um, you know, colorful pattern. Yeah, and I definitely recommend using tape. Right now, at the moment, I have glue, but I'm starting to see how that could be an issue, gluing down sides of a circle to another circle, since there's no edges. Just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I took your advice. Now mine will be super cute and colorful. And I'm just gonna go ahead and bend it like you have and cut that out. I don't know if you can hear my cat, but he is very, uh, he is talking to us. I'm gonna start actually decorating my tube right here, just doing a bunch of different sheets of paper. I have some really cool ones. Erica, how are you gonna plan on decorating yours? Um, I'm probably gonna be doing the same one. I think we have different colors in the sheets that we have. So like, Mine are like these really cool purple textile ones, which kind of look like um, arrows. Mm -hmm. I don't know, would you say that? And then these are just some like pretty maple leaves that are very colorful as well, because it's kind of gray today. And I think we just need some like pretty color in our life. So this is how my circle came out, which it doesn't have to be perfectly round, just as long as it like covers the amount of light you have, but you really want it to be that nice long um, kind of look. And I need it to be on the other side, haha. -ha. 
Okay, so while let me just finish getting this done, and then while we're decorating, I can go ahead and talk about kind of like why we're using um, a CD today, which is like pretty interesting. So let me just go ahead and, oops, sorry, it's so loud. Um, finish doing this and then we can get into the like fun part of using a CD. Okay. So you really want the periscope like edge thing to be able to like block out light, which is why you've cut kind of like that thing, that circle. Um, I okay. cut out earlier. Yes. But I was asking why we used a CD because in most periscopes we use mirrors and prisms. So why don't you go ahead and explain that part? Okay, I will. So while Menor is color, uh, you know, decorating hers. I'm gonna be decorating mine as well. Kind of just doing some fun shapes and I'm gonna explain this. So one of the reasons why we're using a CD today is kind of seems like an odd choice because as we said, a lot of periscopes use mirrors and prisms and even like fiber optic tape, fiber optic cable, if I can say that word correctly today. Um, and one of the reasons is because a CD has the ability to diffract light. So diffract is kind of like a fun scientific term in my opinion, um, and it kind of sounds cool. Um, so diffracting light is when a slight bending of the light is passed around the edges of an object. And the amount of bending depends on the re relative size of the wavelength of the light to the size of the opening. So um, this is a super important feature because we want to be able to have that light reflected back so we can kind of see what's above us or what's like around the corner, right? As I'm waving my scissors around, sorry. Um, so a CD is like a mirror like surface because it has to be, because when you are, um, let me just get my cat off the table. Um, so when you are, Putting a CD or when you used to put a CD into a computer, it needed to be able to reflect or deflect light back from the little red laser that would read it, right? So it needs to be a reflective service in order for it to work properly. Um, so a CD has um, basically like a mirror-like surface, as you can see. You can see it reflecting back at you in the screen. Um, and it has these super weird little things called pit spiral tracks and pits, which like I didn't know about before doing this project. Um, sorry, I'm trying to cut out my stuff as well. Um, so these little spiral tracks and pits um, are where the information is stored. So when the um, red light is reading the CD, that's where it's pulling the information from. Um, so that's why it's able to like really give us that effect that we need um, when, <laughs> when we are uh, using it as like a reflective service uh, surface. So thanks for the I'm just going to be quickly finishing up as you can see glue was not a good option for today definitely recommend tape. <laughs> That's all right, we just gotta make it work, I think glue would work for. Um, maybe some other materials um, for the periscope also I think it would be like super cool to paint them. But like you need that time to. To have it dry, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know. That would just be my, my suggestion, I guess. Um, Tuna is very vocal today. Okay. So How's yours looking, Erica? <laughs> mine is coming along. I kind of got distracted a little bit um, for having to explain what a mirror is or what a CD is. So mine is, mine's coming along. I'm trying to make kind of like a patchwork type thing. It is requiring a little bit of extra glue there. You know what would actually work great 
for this type of project would be that like liquid glue, you know, the like Elmer's, it comes with like a little paintbrush um, that you can use. That's just what I definitely I'm think that's a good idea. They also have clear ones too. So if you don't want the white glue to kind of show if you have thinner paper, the clear one Very is much the way so. to go. How's yours looking? Because we only got right around the glue two is uh, not holding up super well, but I think it's it's kind of floral, kind of decorative. But it's very pretty, and then it kind of only matters. I mean, the decorative stuff is kind of only for aesthetic reasons, you know. It's kind of optional. So as long as you have the um, like the little holes and stuff cut out, then that's kind of all that really matters, right? So we have one minute left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and test out my periscope, even though it's looking a little half decorated, that's okay. We're running low on time. So I'm gonna go ahead and slip in my CD and you kind of gotta wiggle it just a little bit. So I'm gonna look through it. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I can see my hand directly above it and like my lights. What about you? What can you see? Mine is kind of a little janky. Didn't turn out the way I wanted. Oh, Sadie just fell out. But if it was working, I'd definitely be able to see my wall. And I would try actually doing what Johan did in the 1430s and just kind of see if I can see above people. At concerts when we are yeah. COVID friendly once more? Yeah. Or without COVID. I think yeah. that would be super fun. Mine turned out really well, I think. I'm really able to like see what's going on through everything. It's so fun. Yeah, but it looks like our time has come to an end. It's exactly 1030. So I really had fun learning about Periscope. So I learned a lot more than I had and I had fun decorating it as well. And hopefully those of you. Yay.